Hi, welcome to the Mac 7 tutorial number 20, Recording and Playing MIDI. Alright, so uh, the other day we made this beautiful pattern. Let's just see you're jamming out on it. For those of you uh, who were not here at the previous uh, tutorials, uh, you just have to jam on something else. I can't help you. But what we're really going to learn is actually how to record MIDI, so you need some sort of MIDI source, so get with it. But those of us in the class here have made this fancy keyboard, and now we're going to figure out how to record with it. So there's my nice, uh, whoops, don't forget to lock your patcher when you're playing so that you don't end up with all sorts of objects getting cluttered all over the place. So let's just say you got the volume up, you've got the church organ, everybody's favorite because it's so loud and you're playing it you've written a new song And you think to yourself, it's so beautiful, I have to record it. Well, it's understandable. So let's um, make ourselves a new patcher. We could put the recorder right in this patcher, but we're not going to do that. We're going to make ourselves a recorder. So um, Command N or Control N if you're on a PC. And we'll get our little information window there because we like it and maximize this thing so we can look at the whole thing. And the typical object to record MIDI in, now note that we're going to record MIDI, which is recording the commands, um, not recording the wave files, we're recording MIDI. So type an N and type SEQ, which is the sequencer for recording and playing MIDI files. So we're just going to click on that, and of course, you have probably already guessed, then we will push Option and click on it and just steal it right out of the help file. So unlock your help patcher and steal that sequencer. Feel bad about it for three seconds while you copy it. Close the file. Stop feeling bad. Delete that sequencer and paste it right in there. This is what they wanted you to do at Cycling 74. Make no mistake about it. This was what they planned all along when they made everything so nice and um, kind of, uh, what, what's the word for it, recursive? So there it is. Here is our um, sequencer with all of its parts and things that tell you what it's doing. So the sequencer is right down here. And here you see the MIDI out, which you can double click on and get your audio unit synthesizer. And then, they did something else over here, which is actually really nice. MIDI has to come from somewhere. We're broadcasting it from our other keyboard, but we're going to have it come in this MIDI in over here. And they have this lovely U menu that says what devices we have available. Um, well, how do you get that? The nice thing is we have already stolen it and we haven't even noticed yet. So let's unlock the patcher and we see that there's this thing called load mess and then a box called MIDI Info. Well, when you stick MIDI Info, the object, on top of a U menu, and you say controllers in the top, it will put out controllers in the bottom. And um, we'll check it later. Um, you can also send it the message for um, uh, devices, which I think is just... <clears throat> which I think is just the letter 0 or the letter 1, but we can easily check that um, by option clicking on it. And so, if you send it a 1, you get all of the output devices, and if you send it a controllers, you get all of the input devices. Well, that's very interesting. Okay, close that. So, um, if you want to have a nice selector for what MIDI is going in and out of your sequencer, then this is the way to do it. And they have it set so that it disappears when it locks, which 
um, you do over here in the in the inspector. Is this too much information already? So let's lock it again. <clears throat> Sorry about the frog in the throat. Just happens. Um, and um, wait, I'm going to unlock it and make this thing a little tiny bit bigger so that we can always see what it's reading. Okay, there we go. So locking the patcher again. It says IAC driver bus one, um, and this is essentially saying on my Macintosh that this is a virtual MIDI bus created by the onboard uh, by the com by the logic board, um, created by the, the 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 software, and on mine I have five of them. I also have. Uh, one for a MIDI device that's plugged in right now, and I have Max 1 and Max 2. I have to tell you that Max 1 and Max 2 have never worked on my computer. I don't know why, maybe I'm just a not very clever person, but I've never gotten them to work, so I always create my own virtual buses. I'm going to show you how to do that now just in case. Um, I can only show you about the Macintosh. I can't show you about everything else on Earth. So what you want to do is get a uh, Finder window. Where are you, Finder? And I have absolutely no ability to zoom on this computer, so you're just going to have to suffer a little bit. Go to your Applications folder. I like it in the Columns way. Go down to the bottom. Look under Utilities, and then look under Audio MIDI Setup, and double-click on that. And you get this keyboard, and eventually Audio MIDI Setup launches. It actually launched already. We weren't paying attention. So up here it says Audio MIDI Setup. I don't know if that's in the record window or not, but then go to Window, and say show the MIDI window. You'll get a MIDI window here in the middle with this IAC driver and double click on it and you'll get this window in which you can create uh, if, if it's small like that just click on this arrow and make it big and then over here where it says ports just add one if you don't have them already. You see I have bus one and then I have some additional ones. I'll just make uh, IAC bus number six. There it is, IAC bus number six. And um, that's, all, that's all you have to do. And you'll give yourself a number of MIDI ports to use. Make sure your device is online. And uh, you can change the color of it. How, how very interesting. For some weird reason, I don't need to apply it. Um, I used to in my old operating system. I don't now. I couldn't tell you why. Okay, so now. I have, if I check in here, um, driver 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Interesting. I don't have 6. I would probably need to relaunch Max to get 6. So if you've just added your first uh, driver uh, 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 MIDI channel here, um, go ahead, save your, save your patcher and uh, restart Mac so that it pulls up the next um, so it pulls up the next uh, uh, MIDI bus. It's not really a MIDI channel. It's a MIDI let's call it a MIDI bus. Okay, so here is we have bus one. Let's assume that you've done all those things and our input is going to be MIDI bus one. So what good does all this do? Um, now we're this MIDI input is listening to driver bus 1. Great. Um, if we're still playing our fantastic piece, and I think I can play it from this window. Yes, I can. Beautiful. But it's not coming in here. Um, how do I know that? I don't, but I instinctively know it. I'm going to go back and I'll show you why. So. Down here, the MIDI out is going to the audio unit's synth. So what we're going to do is change it to IAC driver bus 1. 
and go back to, uh, by the way, if you play it now, you'll notice that you won't hear anything. You can see the keys flashing, but you can't hear anything. There's a perfectly good reason for that that I'll get to in just one second, which is the MIDI's coming in and it's going into the sequencer, but it's not going out because the sequencer's just sitting there. So let's unlock our patcher and connect another line from the MIDI in to the MIDI out. Now this could be dangerous, by the way, if you have your MIDI in and MIDI out set to the same thing or like output on all channels. So lock your patcher and make sure this MIDI out is only going to the audio unit synthesizer or whatever synthesizers on your machine. Okay, and now that we are listening to bus one, let's see if we can play our keyboard from here. Right, so when we play, MIDI is going to come in and it's going to go both into the sequencer and out MIDI in a weird way. This is sort of our monitor going on here. So um, get ready to play, practice a little bit, think about what you're going to play, and get ready to hit record, or memorize where record and stop are. So here we go. Ready? So hit record. It's recording. I almost can't stand how beautiful that was. Okay, so did we record it? Let's find out. Oh, we did. I'm proving that by moving my mouse around with my hand, which shows you that I'm not using my, my hand to play right now. That is just, and, and look, we can stop it. And um, <laughs> this is funny. The start 512 is at half speed, so we could play it slow. Um, and there was a delay at the beginning, so this is going to start really slow. Come on. Whew. Oh, it's even better slow. Okay, stop. Now, there's an interesting thing. I stopped it, and the note keeps playing. One of the things that happens in MIDI is that if you send a note on, and you never send a note off, uh, it just never shuts off. Now, in a lot of cases, if it's a drum note, or a, let me just turn that down a little bit. If it's a drum note or a piano note, it fades away. But if it's a pipe organ, it doesn't. And actually, that's why I picked the pipe organ to play today, it, besides it being my favorite instrument. So what can we do about this? One thing we can do is just play the whole thing again from start to finish, and we know that it'll cover that note and hit an off and hopefully soon there so it went through and it and it hit that note um, and I could hit stop at a time when I know there's nothing playing but it would be chancy so I'm just gonna let it play to the end because we're gonna fix this sheer genius sheer genius you know before we go on with figuring out how to stop that you see the read and the write here. If you write this, you can now save this as your genius piece of work. I mean, just go ahead. Under music, right on your computer, I'm kind of kidding, but you can say, you know, Mary had a little uh, lamb named Mozart. And... Uh, uh, I spelled it wrong. It doesn't matter. I'm never going to play this again, but there it goes. So now you can even go ahead and load MIDI files that you can get from the internet and play your favorite files on your sequencer. Is this exciting? It is exciting. Trust me. Uh, you don't know yet. So, but what do we do about those stuck on notes? We're not going to be able to stop this thing from leaving those notes. We're, we're going to be forced to listen to every song all the way through. And um, when you have the kind of uh, genius 
songwriting ability that I do, that can be torture. Well, there is um, two ways to deal with this, and I'm going to show you one, and then I'm going to do, I believe, a supplemental video to show you the other. So let's pull MIDI out down here, and there's an object just made for this called, type the letter N, MIDI Flush. Yes, MIDI Flush. If you've got notes that you need to flush out of your MIDI, use MIDI Flush. There it is. Okay. And then you'll also need a bang for the MIDI Flush. So type B and connect that right on there. Now, how can we... We could just hit this whenever we decide to stop, but we could be a lot smarter and take the stop message and um, just to be safe, we're going to add another object in here. I know, it seems crazy. Uh, delay. So delay 250 is going to give us 250 milliseconds for the sequencer to play whatever notes it's going to play already once you say stop. I mean, this is all pretty instantaneous, but in computer worlds, not so much. So what's going to happen is we're going to hit stop. It's going to tell the sequencer to stop, and then 250 milliseconds later, it's going to say, hey, if there's any notes that there was not an off note sent for them, send that off note now. And we are going to have the most kick-ass MIDI synthesizer here. Well, actually, no, not the most kick-ass, but not the worst MIDI synthesizer in the world. So, not synthesizer, sequencer. So let's go ahead and hit go. And we're going to try some stopping when we know there's a note actually playing. Hey. Hmm. Stop. Oh, I'm sorry. There it is. My mistake. My bad. You notice that MIDI flush did work when I finally hit the bang. Delay does not like anything except a bang. It, it really hates any input that's not a bang. So I'm going to put a bang here and connect that wire to it. Wire, that patch cord from the stop. Sorry about that, everybody, but learn by others' mistakes. And then uh, go out and make your own. Okay, let's lock that down again. Play it. And stop on a long note. Look at that. It's just going to stop whenever we tell it to. And that is great. And by the way, um, just while we're here and before I say goodbye, you can also um, change this number, uh, let's just say, to something that's faster than 1024. Let's just say 1500 in case you're, you know. And then go ahead and play it. Hey, this means something to me. It means that 2,500 would be even better. That's what it means to me. Okay, let's hear it now. Good. We can start it, we can stop it, and we can play it faster. Is that enough for one video? Rock on, people. I will see you in the next video tutorial. Patch well.